So we are in conversation today with Mr. Anant Nahata, the Managing Director of Excom Group. Anant, welcome to the show. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Good so, Anand, you know, Execom has been in the charging infrastructure space primarily. So, you know, I want to understand from you, where exactly do you see, you know, India being placed when you talk about charging infrastructure? Because, you know, we are now seeing a lot of uptick in the overall electric vehicle space, be it two-wheelers, four-wheelers or three-wheelers. Right, right. No, so, uh, uh, of course, uh, you know, electrification is a global phenomena and it has uh, caught up quite well uh, you know, uh, today, uh, even in India, and that is across segments. Obviously, uh, there is, uh, in terms of numbers, there is uh, much larger electrification in the two-wheeler, three-wheeler side, but but uh, four-wheelers also is, is a really strong momentum, and that's an area we are really excited about. Uh, today, there are not even uh, many uh, models, but still we see large sales, and with availability of more companies, more models, this is only going to increase. Uh, of course, uh, as, as you rightly pointed out in the question for all of this, charging infrastructure is uh, uh, really important. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, how I see today uh, and, and where India can get to, uh, primarily charging infrastructure can be divided into two segments, residential and uh, public. Uh, so uh, we see a lot of OEMs taking the lead today in developing the charging infrastructure for the residents. Uh, they tie up with uh, different partners, including charger manufacturers such as Exicom, uh, then uh, system integrators or the installers uh, to provide customers a hassle-free uh, free experience uh, of, of uh, getting an installed charger at their residence, uh, which contributes to the maximum, uh, you know, let's say kilowatt hours of charging uh, for a typical uh, car. Uh, while, uh, you know, on the, on the public infrastructure side, uh, the, initially the government started this initiative two, three years ago, but now we see so many private sector uh, companies, right from startups to scaled startups to big conglomerates like uh, Reliance or, or, or Fortum, uh, who are uh, installing uh, EV chargers as, as part of public infrastructure. You know, uh, in, my, in my opinion, give or take, uh, there would be at least between 200 to 300 chargers being installed monthly. Uh, and the total tally of EV charges today in the country would be uh, somewhere, uh, as part of public infrastructure, would be north of uh, 10,000 chargers, uh, in, in uh, my opinion. Uh, there is no, uh, you know, uh, let's say industry report on the actual count, but uh, this is the best estimate. Uh, and as per our analysis, given the penetration of EV, uh, I think in the next five years, India is going to require uh, you know, above 120,000 DC chargers, fast chargers, and uh, maybe double of that uh, as uh, as AC chargers. Right. So, out of these 10,000 uh, public chargers, Saman, so what would be Exicom's contribution there? How many chargers have you installed so far? And you know, you talked about home chargers as well. So, what is the utilization rate of these public chargers that you have installed so far? Right. So, so uh, uh, you mentioned both home and uh, public. So, uh, at at uh, I'll, I'll start with the easier category, which is home. Uh, this is this is an area where uh, we have very deep relationships with OEM, uh, whether it's uh, uh, MG Motors, whether it's Tata Motors, uh, whether it's uh, some of the leading German car makers such as Audi, uh, uh, and then we are you know in talks and discussion with many more. Uh, and today we would, uh, as, as Exicom, almost 70% to 80% market share in residential charging uh, is by Exicom. We were able to develop the right product, uh, you know, with right aesthetic uh, and, and present in a way, uh, you know, where the customer and the OEM got a lot of confidence on, on how the charging experience uh, would be or the desired charging experience would be uh, achieved. Uh, and that's a market we continue to focus on uh, going uh, forward. Uh, on the public infrastructure side, uh, we uh, definitely uh, again would have uh, close to 40% uh, uh, market share in, in that area. Uh, we uh, you know, work with a variety of bus manufacturers, uh, a lot of uh, private charge point operators, uh, where our market share is probably even higher, 60% north. Uh, and and a lot of government tenders, uh, uh, you know, where, uh, where where there is a lot of competitions, including uh, you know, uh, let's say all types of uh, players, and the conditions are are not uh, very stringent. 
uh, where uh, we, we still participate. We have high high level of deployment there, but not as high a market share as uh, uh, we would like. But overall, I think, uh, you know, uh, in terms of our con overall contribution to this current Indian ecosystem, uh, you know, would be close to 4,000 chargers installed uh, out of these uh, 10K. So with the, with the volumes of EVs right now, and with that, you know, I'm, specific, I'm you know, uh, mentioning about the electric four wheelers, uh, you know, the electric passenger vehicles that we have on the roads. Not many cars are there on the roads right now. So, what is the utilization rate of these four thousand chargers? You know, are you still at a very low utilization rate, or you're seeing a reasonable, you know, uh, utility yeah. of these uh, installed chargers? So, uh, just to clarify, as Exicom, we are a product supplier. We are a technology provider, right? So, we would work with. Uh, uh, investors of charging stations, whether they are charge point operators or, or uh, power companies or, or government to uh, supply them the right solution, the product, the technology, and, and they would actually uh, invest on those stations. Uh, so utilization is something which uh, is, is uh, uh, their part of the fence uh, is uh, what uh, they uh, really track and care about. But just from a general industry knowledge, I can tell you, um, that uh, obviously today there are not many cars on the road, right? So anybody who builds infrastructure is looking 10 years, uh, you know, utilization and all the models are developed on on uh, basis of that. Uh, so you will find many charges where utilization is uh, south of 10%. But now the positive thing is uh, wherever we see large fleets uh, or, or uh, you know, uh, let's say uh, a B2B business operating, which are totally electric, uh, in addition to the usual uh, uh, B2C charging, there are many charges in the country now which are uh, seeing utilization rate in excess of 25-30%. Uh, I think it's uh, still a long way to go to get utilization factor correct, uh, but that's where the investment is going. Right To get utilization, first you need to have a network, uh, then you need to have cars, uh, then uh, you need to have confidence uh, in, in using this seamlessly. And then that's, that's when utilization uh, really uh, starts. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, uh, I, I think future is bright and we'll see better utilizations and progressively better every year. Going forward, if you can just give us an idea about how are we going to see these charges being installed, you know, when we have a lot of uh, like an accelerated move towards electric vehicles going forward. So how do we see these charges being installed both at, you know, the home as well as the public infrastructure, you know, because will you be able to, you know, install a public inf uh, public charger at maybe every three to five kilometers? And also the major issue might be, you know, installing charges at people's homes. And when you see, you know, in cases of the metros in India, you know, people don't really have their designated parking spot. So how is this problem going to be solved? Right, right. No, I, I think a great question. So, in fact, uh, some of our current projects are with OEMs to uh, solve these problems because a lot of the cars stand on the streets outside the home, not necessarily a dedicated parking spot inside the home. But uh, anyways, uh, if I come to uh, precedence, uh, right? Um, so, if we divide into three categories, one is the residents with dedicated parking spots. So, their uh, charges have been installed and, uh, um, you know, that's, that's fairly easy you have to still upgrade the electrical connection do do upstream electrical work but there is space and and power and uh, all that to set that up uh, the second is apartments and uh, condominiums uh, that's that's a little bit uh, you know more uh, challenging because uh, to estimate how many people will have evs how much infrastructure to, to set but by and large you know with some thumb rule uh, you know buildings are anyways going between converting 10 to 20 at max 30% of the parking spots uh, to uh, be converted to electric. Uh, so a lot of uh, apartment complexes, if you go to Bombay or even in Gurgaon where I live, uh, and uh, I see uh, you know initiatives already uh, taken uh, to install chargers at, at these complexes or being discussed uh, to install it uh, in, the, in the coming time. So this, this is more shared uh, infrastructure. Uh, right, and mo mostly these will be AC chargers. Yes, uh, maybe 10 to 20 percent would be DC, but largely AC. Now, the third problem, which is the most complicated when you uh, are, are in, in neither one of these two categories and you have a car which uh, doesn't have a dedicated parking spot. So two things will happen for uh, those. Uh, yes, uh, you know, uh, the shared charging infrastructure will come up on the streets. 
uh, which may be, uh, let's say, uh, uh, you know, something like a 3.3 kilowatt uh, single socket charger, uh, which is low cost, uh, can be put up on light poles, could be put up on street lines, does not require too much upstream electrical infrastructure work. Uh, such infrastructure uh, uh, will come up in the societies, in the colonies, and we see a lot of companies and ourselves and some of the OEMs taking initiatives to talk to RWAs and societies to uh, do this enablement. Um, uh, so that that uh, will be uh, one way uh, you will see this deployment. Second is uh, you will see a higher utilization of DC fast charging versus a common thing that we have heard globally that 80% uh, of the charging happens in uh, on, on AC. While that is true, uh, you know, uh, that was true because people who were buying EVs for the last two years were more affluent uh, class people who always had a dedicated parking spot, and that's why 80% of the charging happened uh, on AC. Uh, but if you see data, even in a country like Norway, uh, only for last year, the proportion of DC is higher because now people who are buying EVs, they don't have dedicated parking spot, so they rely more on public infrastructure than uh, the predecessors uh, owners uh, would uh, would have relied so that's that's a trend also that you will uh, see in india but then on does that lead you to another challenge maybe you know because for any battery you know slow charging is more beneficial compared to fast charging compared to consistent or prolonged fast charging so in terms of the overall technology itself do you think going forward then the overall cell chemistries need to evolve further to support this continuous or you know prolonged uh, fast charging. Uh, two two ways to look at it, right? So when I said uh, there will be higher dependency on fast charging, that doesn't mean hundred percent dependency uh, because nobody would uh, rely on a transport which is only uh, uh, which can be only fast charged. Uh, and uh, they would definitely have some or the other shared charging, as I mentioned in RWA society, uh, number one. Number two, battery technology is, is advancing so fast uh, that, uh, you know, versus earlier technology, today's battery don't require slow charging majority of the time. They need to be slow charged only once in a while to maintain life, to be able to balance or calibrate uh, to, to make sure its performance is right. Uh, so that's why we today, uh, you know, the, let's say for fleets, uh, the you know proportion of fast charge today is as much more than it used to be in uh, in, in the past. So I think with both these uh, points, uh, probably I, we, at least I don't see a technology risk as such. Right, and you know, being a product supplier, uh, you know, Exicom. So Anand, so uh, the current setup that you have, the current charges that you supply to these charge point operators, so, you know, what is the maximum capacity in terms of the DC output? You know, how fast can these charges go? And going forward, what sort of new products are you, you know, working on? Today uh, we have a very elaborate uh, range, right? Uh, from what we uh, call as flow, uh, slow charges, AC charges, to fast DC chargers. Uh, since you asked about DC, we start at 30 kilowatt chargers. Uh, and go all the way to 360 kilowatt chargers. So, and then between those, there would be 60, 120, 180, 240, uh, all the way to 360. 240 and above, including 360, are more used for buses. Uh, and there is a, you know, a new phenomena. So buses are huge battery, right? Like even up to 400 kilowatt hours, and they can take huge amount of currents. So, uh, and and now there is, uh, they have technology both on the charger side and on the bus side that both the guns of the charger, both the outlets of the charger are used to charge the same bus. Uh, so you are really pumping 240 or 360 kilowatt of uh, power into charging one uh, bus. Um, and, and on the car side, uh, you know, majority of the infrastructure uh, which we are supplying is, uh, you know, on more around 60 or 120 kilowatt. Uh, in fact, we just supplied some charges to, uh, you know, one of the co big Korean companies uh, who, which already has cars uh, taking more than 150 uh, kilowatt. So generally, I think uh, today an, uh, an acceptable standard is 20 to 80% charge within one hour, uh, depending on the battery technology adopted by car. This could be you know, uh, lower, 50 minutes, 40 minutes. Uh, but the trend which we are going to see going forward is charging sub 20 minutes. Uh, so that, that uh, is uh, you know, probably near to midterm future. 
and anand you know the nhev right now has started a pilot on the gurgaon and jaipur highway as well as the you know the delhi agra highway and they are installing these you know the public charges there so and they also have sort of a target to reach 5000 you know kilometers of highways by 2024 so is exicom a part of that and overall do you see i mean how do you see uh, I mean, what's your outlook of you know the this charging infrastructure going forward in india yeah so uh, i i think uh, ministry of power dhi uh, they've been actively working in uh, on uh, uh, setting infrastructure or providing the blueprint to set up infrastructure in the cities as well as on highways highways i think it was 5 kilo 25 kilo every 25 kilometers one uh, charger on all the major highways and uh, these uh, uh, th- these these initiatives are tendered uh, and uh, usually uh, a combination of public sector companies uh, and private companies whoever uh, when uh, such award uh, they they further uh, you know get into business discussion or float tenders with companies like us and we are supporting multiple of these charge point operators uh, and lot of our charges today are getting installed on um, uh, highways uh, let's say uh so so uh, yeah I, i think at least today the way we see the infrastructure coming up in the highways is on critical hub routes so you know it would be delhi jaipur delhi agra uh, you know uh, delhi chandigarh uh, and and bombay pune or uh, bangalore uh, mangalore so uh, while uh, on on uh, some of the bigger highways where there is a lot of freight movement so i think once the electrification of buses and trucks reaches to a certain point Uh, we'll see those being electrified uh, with uh, you know uh, th- this these type of vehicles coming up large format vehicles uh, getting electrified uh, in the city as i you know mentioned earlier i think today there are more than 200 300 chargers uh, on a pan india basis coming up uh, you know uh, tata power geo bp fortum all these are doing fantastic job in uh, uh, putting up such infrastructure and, and not just these three these are no let's say big companies but uh, there are multiple uh, smaller to mid size companies uh, static charge zone um, you know uh, uh, many others who are uh, putting this up so i i firmly believe uh, in uh, cities uh, over uh, about 5 to 7 km radius uh, at least in the top 10 cities will definitely have a good amount of charging infrastructure in the near future we wish you all the luck you know Anand and uh, good luck to you and uh, thank you so much for the time. Thank you, thank you, Meng. Oh.